This is a case of a 40-year-old gentleman with a history of uh, trauma from a paintball gun injury about six years prior who underwent subsequent cataract surgery. On my initial evaluation, his uh, pupil was traumatically dilated. His uh, intraocular lens was dislocated with the superior haptic in the superior angle. And he also had significant capsular fibrosis and some early capsular phimosis. So prior to the surgery, I used the YAG laser to make a small opening in the posterior capsule. Um, my plan was to reposition the eye wall into the sulcus with and capture the optic into that scarred fibrotic capsule. Uh, here I made four paracentesis as I also plan to do a circulatory pupilplasty um, to bring the pupil down to a functional state. So here I'm using a vitrector and I'm going through that little small hole I made with the, the YAG laser and I'm using the anterior vitrector to cut um, the posterior capsule or the, at least the scarred posterior capsule and my goal is to make about a five millimeter opening um, um, so I can optically capture the lens and have a little more stable um, stable eye wall than just a sulcus uh, placement. And as you can see, the vitrector has a difficult time cutting a band of uh, that interior lip of the uh, phimost rex there. So I'm using some intraocular scissors to make a little nick um, in that band there. And as you can see, it's uh, once you get a little edge there, the vitrector has um, still has a little difficult time, but it's this is not as a really fibrotic capsule so eventually after a little bit of patience um, I'm able to cut through the um, the band of uh, uh, fibrotic capsule there and so here I'm just taking my time to um, size that um, opening in the the capsule um, here I'm just filling the eye with a little bit of uh, helon and I'm going to see if I can pop that optic and I'm sliding the optic and capturing into the capsule and as you can see the centration and stability is just um, is really quite good so I'm using the band bimanual IA here to remove the viscoelastic and here I'm injecting a little bit of uh, intracameral um, myocol just to see if I can induce a little bit of meiosis but um, this is pretty much his, uh, his tonic pupil state I go ahead and fill the anterior chamber with uh, viscoelastic, and I'm using here a 10 0 proline suture um, on a curved needle in my right hand, and on my left, I'm using um, MST microholder forceps, which I find really effective in manipulating iris tissue. Initially, I was using uh, the MST Duet micro tires, which really weren't that effective in grasping delicate tissue as the tips are flat without any serrations and so you pretty much have to almost macerate the tissue to get a firm grip on it um, so I, I can't say enough of how much easier how much time is saved and how much more delicate you are to with the tissues with these serrated tips of the MST micro holders so here I'm using a 25 gauge cannula to guide the tenoproline needle out of the paracentesis uh, without creating another passage and binding to the cornea Apologize, the video is a little bit out of focus, and I think I was accommodating while well, I was concentrating pretty hard at this point. Um, but um, anyway, as I, here I'm starting the second quadrant, and again I'm just passing the needle on the first bite, and then using um, pretty much my my microholder forceps to guide the tissue and just kind of um, bring it to the needle in like little pleats, and I try to make about five to six bites per quadrant um, about a millimeter or so apart it just you know the more bites that you're able to purchase the the rounder and the better the cosmetic outcome um, that you're going to end up with instead of having a scallop border it'll be a little bit more smooth the more bites you have but you kind of have to balance it because you know for some of these really brittle and thin irises you know you take too many bites then you're going to start cheese wiring or start tearing the edge of the iris and now you can see I'm, I'm struggling a little bit as the needle doesn't seem very sharp anymore uh, after passing through you know enough tissues and you are manipulating the the tip and you're going through the cannula the, the tip does get a little dull so as you as you journey around the the pupillary border it, it, it becomes a little more difficult um, I do have the double-armed um, needle on the other side 
as a backup. So if I do find that it is a little bit too difficult to um, continue suturing through the iris without you know causing too much um, stretching, then I will go ahead and I can go with the other <clears throat> with the other needle and go clockwise. But in this case, I kind of felt that I can still continue. Um, the other reason why I use the uh, other arm without cutting is so that if I have suture breakage or if I go all the way around in some of these really, really dilated, dramatically dilated patients and I don't get enough bites and I'm not happy with the cosmetic outcome, I can always go the opposite direction in another 360 just to kind of fill in the gap, so to speak, and to get a better cosmetic outcome. This this side tends to be a little more difficult because um, I'm suturing with my left hand and me being right-handed is just something that just takes a little bit more mental effort. And as you can see here, the there is a quite a bit of stretch trying to pull, um, trying to push the needle through the iris there. So it is getting on the dull side, but you know, I was like, mm, I'm going to continue with this. Uh, um, since I'm almost done, I'm just going to continue with this needle here. Um, but so it tends to be a little bit prettier on for this my passes um, personally for me on the initial two quadrants and then the last quadrants um, sometimes are a little more difficult so um, so here I'm just finishing up and I'm just trying to end pretty much where I started because um, I really didn't want to pass it uh, fish it out one more time through a paresthesis but and so here I am again 25 gauge cannula pushing the needle through to guide it through the paracentesis and using um, some type of forceps, either your micro forceps or a needle holder to pull the needle out of the paracentesis. So, um, and here's where I, you want to be really careful because here I'm tying the suture um, and sizing the pupil eye. I end up tying the suture outside the eye through the paracentesis just because it's easier. Um, so I tend to make the pupil smaller than I intend to be intend to want it to be so i'm aiming for about a four millimeter pupil at the end of the case but i'm i'm pulling it down to about three because i know that some of that suture once i push it back into the eye and once the kind of the this the um the tissue kind of you know readjusts itself around the pupil um it tends to size pretty pretty nicely and so i'm actually you know wanting to be very careful because if you get a bind in your stitch or a premature knot or something it just it's a pain because you can't really undo your work and unless you want to do the whole thing over again and I actually had a case where I was just about to you know put the first throw and I was readjusting my hand and my the suture had stuck to my my glove and I ended up pulling the stitch out and so I was that wasn't the happiest day but I just had to redo the whole thing again so so here I am I usually put about um like a three one one three three throws Either that or three one one one. So sometimes I just feel like eh, maybe I do four or five throws just just because I don't want this to come out. So there I go ahead and take the viscoelastic and um, out with uh, IA and I'm going and I'm kind of readjusting the pupil with uh, BSS and hydrating the paracentesis that I made. So at this point I'm pretty happy with the cosmetic outcome and as the post op period progresses the pupil tends to even round out just a little bit better. So so the patient started out with 2200 vision glaring to 2400 with significant debilitating um, glare. And here's a photo of one month post-op patient's best corrective visual acuity 2020 um, with the resolution of his glare symptoms. And the patient ended up very happy with his uh, visual acuity and his cosmetic outcome.